three, two, go! I'm Dr. Kott, the director of MECA. So what we're preparing for today is back on the moon again next Friday night, which is out of France. It's an organization on the moon again. We participated for the last so maybe five years in it. So we've got a new group of full people with us. Here you see two young people who are in the spacesuits who are learning all about uh, space and being astronauts and so on. So what we're zeroing in on today primarily is two new fields that are open uh, to people involved with technology, science, and uh, space. One of them was his artificial intelligence. The other one is 3D printing, so we're doing mostly to right now on 3D printing. So I'll go over the way it applies to um, space and astronomy. The technical term for this would probably be, um, I was trying to think of, uh, how to say, digital, astral digital imaging and modeling. Modeling means you're going to model something. So in front of here, I've got all kinds of things here. The old technology from years gone by is a black and white picture. A black and white picture. And with that technology now, thanks to Bamboo Lab and the unbelievable hardware software that comes with that um, 3D printer, I can take that picture there and turn it into at least three different types of uh, things. We can turn it into a statue. That's me. That's me in my army uniform. That's the statue made from this picture. So they've come up with the algorithms that can evaluate that picture and um, do the modeling. So a few years ago, this was called computer vision. So we're now much further than computer vision. So that's the statue. The next thing is the 3D relief figure. This can be used for modeling the moon. I taught map writing and I made map writing in the military engineer corps of the US Army for 20 or 30 years taught it in a high school back in 55. And uh, back then we used lithography. But anyway, now we can make a relief map off of um, drone cameras. We can make it off of NASA uh, cameras and so on. And then we can also make what is called a lithogram or lithopane. Lithogram graph by NASA usually means they hand drew it. A lithopane means a computer did it, and you can put a light behind there and it will shine through. And you can actually now do that in three colors. So the young people now have to learn, in addition to RGB, red, green, blue, they have to learn cyan, magenta, and yellow, the subtractive colors. So now we can print various things on the moon, which is what we're getting ready for here. Here is where we landed on the moon with the Firefly Blue Ghost about two months ago. This is in the Sea of Crisis. We can take this off of NASA Moon Trek. You just pick off what you want, and then with manipulating it, it will give you an STL file, the 3D print, and then if you have color printing, you can print it in different colors. So you can see this is obviously where we landed the Blue Ghost, and it's still sitting there. And on that same mission, uh, we had another spaceship, and that one's been circling in space, and now it's been circling the moon for a week, and it's gonna land next Thursday. And that one is called Resilience, uh, the spacecraft. The lunar lander that lands on the moon, has got wheels, <coughs> was made in Sweden. And it was 3D printed. So for people interested in space, 
this is the way to go. Most things in space are going to be 3D printed because they can't afford the weight of taking things up. So they're going to print them in space. So that micro lunar welver that was 3D printed is called Tenacious. And it will land here on the Sea of Cold in Latin that's Maria Figoris right about in the middle up here on Thursday. So this is a 3D print of that area there. This is the Sea of Cold this way. So in throwing art into this world of the STEM, where STEM has become STEAM, art is, involves music and dance or drawing, painting, and so on. The Swedish people have what they call the Red Swedish Cabin. That's been around for a while in Sweden in a space movement. Went up to the ISIS, the International Space Station, uh, about uh, 10 years ago and now one painter has been painting it and drawing it and putting it in various locations so now they've decided to put one on the moon so the tenacious rover has it on the front bumper and Thursday it's going to push it off and it'll jump it there on the moon now the cabin usually is red. We have white because the pictures we have, there's a lot of snow in Sweden. Therefore, the roof, the picture that we use, has snow on the roof. You can also see that we've integrated and put text in there. We put our mecha text model there and logo. So that's 3D printing. Now, <coughs> In addition, there's another world that's opening up that needs this technology bad, and that's the blind people. Blind people and visually impaired, and there's millions of them in the United States. And there's lots of them who are old, like myself, who have macular degenerations and will be going blind. So, with this kind of technology, if you can think of what, what we're doing here is X, Y, Z, three-dimensional and then I can print it as we see fit. So I'm in the process of learning 3D printing of Braille. So here's a plaque we made with the 3D printing and this is a program called OpenSCAD. It's a computer assisted drafting program and I need lots of help on this because the author of that program only took it so far, so he didn't take it to complete Braille. He took it mostly to the numbers, the alphanumerics, and so on. So here you can see A, P, O, L, L, O, Apollo. And you can actually print that on these devices. This one here is the Sea of Crisis. You can see you can make a plaque and put it on there. Or you can actually make a plaque and glue it on the back. We have a couple of these. We can put QR codes in there to be read. 3D print them or doing the various techniques. So here's something out of France too. This is a 3D print. Here is the moon. And you can see the letters there in different languages. So it's in English, English, French, Greek, and I believe Latin. So now, as I said, in addition, I can take that and 3D print what we did here, Apollo on there. Oh, that's A, one dot, two. L is three dots, L, L, A, P, O, L, L, O. Now what we've done in this world of teaching STEAM, at Christmas time, we do Christmas music. So we go caroling at Christmas, and we have a lot of videos up there 
that if you want to learn Christmas songs and how to sing them. So this here is a 3D print again, and that's real, and that's Silent Night. So it's the words to Silent Night. So most songs, about 3,000 songs, that will fit into the formula, mathematical, of 32 measures can be printed like this here, on that size. We can put that on the back of something, or we can 3D print it and make a bound board book out of it. I can put holes in there, we can put it in a notebook and so on. So if you look at it here, I won't go over, but it says Silent Night, Holy Night, All is Calm. So anybody who can read Braille may be able to see some of the letters on there. So the newest thing to come out in this world of um, digital modeling, imaging and modeling, is this here. Most of what you see here has been open source or freeware, which means somebody is willing to do a lot of work and offer it to the world as a goodwill gesture. It only falls under a very simple copyright law called Creative Commons or Common Creative. So this one happens to be a keychain of the Apollo sites. And he did it in two colors again. You can see the words. Apollo 11. So what he's done is very clever, which is another world that we've touched in prior to these girls here joining us. This was last summer. But he's made it in such a way that this is the same as this. This is the surface of Apollo 11, which landed right about here. We have that in a big one too. But what he's done is made them into a circle. So again, for the blind people, they can learn by what we call tactile learning. They can feel this with their hands because they can't see, okay? Those who are visually impaired can still see and can still read the braille on here with their eyes. And then hopefully, if they go blind, they'll be able to feel the A, P, O, I said L, L, three dots, L, L, A is one dot. So there's a six dots in Braille, three and three, that's all there is. So it's relatively easy technology. So we talked about QR codes. We use QR codes a lot. And now we're just moving into two, the creative part of it. Up to now, they've been all square. Now the QR codes that we're using are round, okay? I made one for this space world that's in a star. This one here we've got for this project, it's a little house and it's a QR code. So in the QR codes that we've been using, we've been using this simple one, you'll get 1,024 characters in there. So we've been putting those on our equipment, such as our tele smart telescopes, which we'll be showing next Friday, looking at the moon in a park here in Harker Heights, Texas. The other way with the same technology, a little dot, and it's one inch, one inch diameter or one inch square. The same size as you put on a microscope slide, yeah. the label, for those of you who have used the microscope. So what he's done is left a little hole here, and you can buy these little dots and put them in here. And then you can program them with NFC, Near Field Communications, RFID, okay? remote field identifications like we're using for drones now. And this ring I have is the same thing in there. You can touch this against your phone and it will give you my personal information. 
So if I need emergency care, you can touch this to your phone, and you'll know my email, you know all kind of information about me. So now what he's done here is very clever. The first one I've seen use it, other than what we've been doing for about two years, in a different way, is he put a hole there. Now we'll get these circles and put them in there, glue it in, and put in this here. And then the young lady here just went through a session on how to put this where, using latitude and longitude. Here you see the latitude and longitude, zero, zero of the moon, okay, east and west, north and south. So you have the latitude and longitude so far north and so far, what, east, so far that way, or down. This is plus, down below is minus. So if you go below the equator, which is where we're working on now, the United States now is working on the South Pole. This will be the first landing for anybody in the world on the North Pole. Here we landed here previously, and the Russians landed there at the same time that we landed Apollo 11 in Tranquility. They landed here, but they crashed. That was uh, Russian spaceship number four on the Sea of Crisis. Now, we just landed there successfully with the company Firefly out of Cedar Park, Texas, and that was called the Blue Ghost. And that will be sitting there for the next million years. So anyway, that pretty well to run down on what we're preparing for next Friday night. So the girls went through and hopefully they'll be there next Friday night in their spacesuits helping us teach people. So again, to wind up it's called the Swedish Red Cabin. So Actually, what it's going to be known as, as it's, it already is, but it will as soon as it hits the moon, it's called the Swedish Moon House. So now if you look up anything about what we're talking about, if you look up Moon House and Swedish, or Swedish Moon House, there's other moon houses up there, but not on the moon. They're just uh, uh, words that people put together. But the Swedish Moon House is the official word for this cottage that's going to sit there uh, on the moon as of next Thursday. <coughs> so that pretty well winds up. Do girls have any questions? No, sir. No? no, sir. You got any questions? Okay. So they just went over a good session. We'll have our moon map maybe there, and um, they'll be showing people how to locate things on the moon and then we'll get our smart telescopes. We are using the Dwarf 2 at this point because we can't get a Dwarf 3 very quickly. So for our teaching we have five of those and we've used them all over Texas now. We have a network all over Texas from Plano, uh, Texas to Copper's Cove uh, to Killeen and Harker Heights. And now we're working with since the um, solar eclipse with uh, zero, um, I can't think of the name, I have a metal black, smart telescope. The S30 uh, we just got, and we've worked with the S50 for about a year now since the solar eclipse. So we'll be showing those Thursday night too. So um, we'll be showing people what is happening on the moon and then trying to help them find it with these telescopes. And all this will occur thanks to um, the Harker Heights librarian, Lisa Youngblood is her name, and the city of Harker Heights Parks and Recs.